Chairman Parker, members of the board, uh, thank you. My name is Jeff Reardon. Uh, I work for Trout Unlimited and I'm speaking on behalf of about 1,800 members and five of our chapters here in Maine. Um, I live in Manchester. Um, many of you were not here for previous iterations of this, so for those of you who were, I apologize. Though this will be somewhat repetitive. Um, but I want to explain uh, both who TU is and, and our interest in these rules. Uh, we're a conservation organization. Our mission is to conserve, protect, and restore habitat for cold water fish and their watersheds. Um, we have a staff of about 250 folks like me around the country, mostly in small offices. I'm the one employee in the state of Maine. Um, we have some states like Montana and uh, Washington uh, with a whole lot more staff than that, but most of us are in small offices. And there is not a single issue there are lots of things that affect trout and salmon habitat, irrigation, dams, uh, water discharges, all sorts of things. But we have more staff who work on remediation of mining sites than any other issue. It is the number one issue facing um, cold water fish habitat and for that matter aquatic habitat for any species nationwide and, and, and probably worldwide. Here in Maine, because, and I think Dr. Marvini did a good job of explaining uh, in both his presentation today and some others, why we have the mineral resources we do where we do, those resources are up high in the mountains at the headwaters of the major rivers that are what give Maine the unique brook trout resource you've heard about from a number of people. And you've heard uh, a lot of people use the number 90% uh, of the remaining eastern brook trout habitat is here in Maine. Actually, if we look, look at lake and pond populations, it's about 97%. The eastern brook trout joint venture, when they looked in 2006 at watersheds uh, from east of the Mississippi where brook trout are native. Uh, Maine has more intact brook trout watersheds than the rest of the country combined. We really have a unique resource here. And unfortunately, uh, we've been fortunate to avoid mining impacts that have affected that resource in other states. Um, mining is among the number one reasons why states like West Virginia and Pennsylvania and some states in, in Virginia, uh, primarily coal mining in those states, have lost their resources um, we've not much had that experience here, but if we develop some of the sites that uh, Dr. Marvini has talked about, um, we, we, we will run that risk. And the locations couldn't be worse from an aquatic habitat perspective. Bald Mountain sits at the headwater of the Aroostook River, one of Maine's finest brook trout streams. The potential Ledge Ridge site, which saw a lot of exploratory activity in the 1980s, sits at the head of the McGalloway River, uh, maybe Maine's finest brook trout river. That's what feeds the Ziskahas Lake and Parmacini Lake. The Alder Pond deposit sits in the Enchanted Stream watershed and feeds into the Dead River, another destination fishery, brings people from out of state to spend money in the Forks area every year. The Katahdin Iron Works site, which was historically mined for iron, there are some other potential deposits up there of other metals, is at the headwater of the Pleasant and the Piscataquis watershed. Um, and I've even heard, I've, I've asked Dr. Marvini about this, uh, I have heard from locals that there was some exploratory activity in the Dabuli area around Dabuli Mountain. Um, I'm, I'm not sure uh, that this one is not one of the sites that I've heard about from Dr. Marvini, um, but that would be at the head of the Dabuli region, which holds the state's um, stronghold for blueback char, which are uh, um, state spe special concern species. In any case, uh, mining clearly has the potential to affect those watersheds. What concerns me about the law, and you've heard this from multiple people today, including department staff, is that what we're trying to do here is write good rules based on a bad piece of law. And I think the department staff have done a fine job of trying to take the best of the advice they've gotten over four years from the public and the legislature and others, and within the confines that they were given, I think they've made big improvements in, in, in some of the, the previous uh, versions of the rules. But they can't fix the problems with the law. And if you enact these rules, which will codify and, and uh, put into place some of the negative aspects of, of the law that was passed in 2012. Um, I think uh, for all the good work they've done, those flaws are going to put important resources that people in Maine care about at risk. Uh, in particular, and these are uh, all things that I had in my notes, but they were all mentioned by the EP staff this morning, the law specifically allows for contamination of groundwater, which under the current rules, which are in place today, isn't allowed. Um, it specifically requires that, you do, that, that when DEP issues a permit, they determine that there is no reasonable alternative to mining. I believe the way that was put this morning, um, I, I, I think um, 
I'm sorry, I can't remember by which staff member, was that, that would mean that you can't have a go, no go decision that says no go. You have to permit the mine somehow, just with whatever conditions on it. But frankly, I believe there are some sites we should just say shouldn't be mined. I don't think we should say there should never be any mining in Maine, but I believe there are some sites that are, that are so dangerous they can't be mined um, uh, responsibly, and, and we should be able to say no to those. Um, DEP, I think, has worked very hard based on some suggestions that I think I first made in 2012 to rework the definition of mining area. That diagram they have of the separate mining areas um, captures the concept of what a number of us have been pushing for for a very long time. But it conflicts with the statute, statutory definition of mining area that's in the statute. And frankly, I think you need some statutory changes to have two different terms, one for mining area, one for something I've called mining activity area. I've testified about to you guys before, or something similar. And unfortunately, they can't do that without changing statute, and I think they need to. And finally, it allows facilities on floodplains. We've heard a lot about that. Um, with, with respect to, so again, I, I, so I'm urging you, I think this should be clear, uh, to say no to these rules for those reasons. Um, most of the, the, the issues, I, I think I just captured, are, as DEP staff said, are statutory. Um, a concern, and I understand why DEP brings this concern to you that they have, is what happens if somebody brings us an application today while we have the statute that was passed in 2012 and the rules from 1991 that are in conflict with it. Well, the good news is that the 2012 law left the 1991 standards in place until new standards are adopted. So until Chapter 200 is amended by you and then by the legislature, the old standards remain in place. I think the legislative intent of that is very clear. And as somebody said this morning, um, I don't think there are many uh, legal advisors who are going to advise somebody to put a proposal in front of the DEP arguing that the statute controls and they can ignore the restrictions in the Chapter 200 laws, 200 rules. I do agree with the DEP staff that a bunch of what they've proposed in these rules, issue by issue, is better than the 1991 rules. But on the whole, because it will lock into place and make operational the statutory changes that, that were put in place in 2012, um, I think on balance we're better off where we were. And I will remind people, some of you, not all of you are around, but I was in the legislature in 2012 when that, when that, that, that uh, law was proposed. And what its proponents came to the legislature and said is the existing rules passed in 1991 are a virtual ban on mining. We can't develop a site with those rules in place, so please make them weaker so that we can. And that's what the law did. The rules that you would implement now offer all the good work DEP has done trying to make them as strong as they can. They've got, they've got flaws in them that I think are going to leave us unprotected. The last thing I want to talk about specifically, and I will send you written comments uh, with, with more detailed comments about a number of things in the rules, um, is, is the issue of the public lands. I just spent four, the, most of what I work on these days is trying to facilitate conservation of high quality watersheds for brook trout. I spent much of the last four years working with the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife and the Trust for Public Land to um, raise seven and a half million dollars to buy about 8,000 acres of the Cold Stream watershed. Fortunately, I don't know of any mining sites up there, but if while I had been going out trying to get public support, forest legacy money from the federal government, and land for Maine future money from the state government, if somebody had said, so if the state of Maine buys those 8,000 acres, specifically for the purpose of protecting brook trout habitat and the deer yards on it, which were the primary purposes of, of that protection, does that mean somebody could come along and mine it tomorrow? I guarantee you uh, that wasn't what we thought that wasn't what the U.S. Forest Service thought when they gave us $6.5 million of forest legacy money, and I don't think it was what the Land for Maine Future Board thought when they gave us $1.5 million. This public lands issue is a huge one. Most of those lands, many of them, were specifically bought for purposes of conservation, and if the department's position is that um, mining is allowed on them and the department can't do anything about that, uh, that's a problem that needs to be fixed. And, and again, uh, I don't think these rules will do it, and I'm very concerned about what happens when those, when those go in house. I'm, I'm grateful that there is not a mining site on the Cold Stream unit, uh, but there are potential sites on some other very important public lands. Thank you, and I'll take any questions if anybody still has the patience for it.